Dan Cahill. I'm the city land steward and I am a member of the staff for the city of Burlington. Uh, work specifically out of the Burlington Parks Recreation Waterfront Department and today we are here at Keeslick Park for the Keeslick Park Open House and the intention of this event is to update the community and celebrate with them around a lot of the exciting um, things that are happening here at this park and at the Redstone Cottage which is a newly renovated city building um, home of the conservation team um, and a place of great connection and we're excited to share this with everybody. Um, so at this event you can learn about uh, the forest ecology and things that are happening here in the forest. Some of our work to maintain and support healthy forests in Burlington. Uh, you can learn about expansions of community garden program here at this site. Uh, you can learn about uh, the Burlington Wild Ways, Wild Ways Trail um, and also learn about a new multi-use path that's going to be connecting the Cambrian Rise development to the bike path um, and an exciting development with that is it'll eventually connect to the Burlington Wild Ways Trail um, and make a contiguous 13 mile trail through Burlington from Keeslick Park all the way to Salmon Hole. That's uh, the Lakeview South Community Garden. So is that part of the park? Or? That is part of the park, yep. There are two community garden sites here, and we're working to expand them. We're going to be hoping to increase the gardens by about 10 community garden plots for next season, um, which is really important. The Cambrian Rise development that's being built next door is bringing a lot of new people to this neighborhood, and gardening is one of Burlington and folks in Burlington that are moving to Burlington, that live in Burlington. Gardening is one of their favorite things and most important things for them. So um, we're excited that that's something we can increase here at the park. So is it possible there will be, besides this today, will there be future events here in the park? And who, who could apply to use the park? That's a great question. So with the reno renovation of the Redstone Cottage, there's a community room in that space that can be rented by the public. Um, and it also currently hosts the Burlington Conservation Board meetings uh, the first Monday of the month. Um, so there's already public meetings that occur at this building. And the public can, uh, if you want to do a birthday party here, if you have a, uh, a, you know, a small event or a retreat, that you want to do with your business or something like that, you can rent out this building for that purpose. So who is he, is this, how long has this park been here? Uh, this park was purchased by the city in 2016 or so by, uh, it was sold to the city by Eric Farrell. Um, and it was a part of a pre-negotiated deal when the Cambrian Rise development started. So. He purchased, Eric Farrell purchased the land from Burlington College and then in, as a part of making the whole project work and aligning it with our city goals and values, he sold the land to the city to manage as a city park. Um, and a lot of what you see here at this park, the, per, the way the intentions around how we're managing the forest, protecting the bluffs, um, and the way you see all of the buildings that are being developed over on that side of the parcel. Um, are pretty much in alignment with plans that have been under development in the city since around 2001 uh, when the city had a task force to look at what was then the Burlington uh, Catholic Diocese property, what to be done with that in the future. So there's a lot of work done, you know, 20 plus years ago to think about this, the moment that came, you know, 15, 16 years later, um, which is now seven years ago, eight years ago. I would I, I would say not. I would I would I think either Arthur Park. Where's that? Arthur Park is what's also known as the Sea Caves, um, and that's kind of across from the high school. There's a steep trail. That one seems to be lesser known. Um, I think Mount Calverly Wetland Swamp is also a lesser known park that's behind Franklin Square off North Ave. Um, a really cool rare natural community type there. Lots of cool plants, um, there's boardwalks and trails, um, so maybe this is like third or fourth least known, but I think with its visibility it's got a new park sign, um, and especially with 
once the multi-use path is built, connecting the bike path through, I think it'll become very well known. Um, hey, my name is Daniel Schmidt. I'm the Conservation Field Coordinator with Burlington Parks and Rec. And I'm actually here to talk about the disturbance zones in Keyslick Park. So earlier this winter, we had some wind throw and it took down several large canopy trees within our forest. And then the neighboring builders, SD Ireland, um, came through and took those trees out, but also pulled out the root balls of those trees, causing a lot of disturbance in the forest. And so now we're working with them and other partners to actually um, plant new species of trees within those areas so that we can rejuvenate the forest. And so I have a graphic here that kind of just shows where we've been historically with a full canopy forest to the damage that we saw with trees being toppled and then taken out. This summer we're actually spending a lot of time pulling invasive species, making sure that those areas that have been disturbed are sort of free of invasives so that this fall when we plant um, new trees that they'll really have a chance to grow that they'll be able to thrive, that they'll be healthy trees, um, and that they won't be taken over by the invasives that we find in a lot of our natural areas. Um, and we've worked with uh, several nurseries and we've also worked with consultants to put together a planting plan. And so currently we're doing a fall planting of red maples and red oaks. And so we'll have about 80 different trees, um, bare rootstock trees that we're going to plant and that will eventually grow up to be tall canopy trees. In the spring we're also going to plant some um, b and B, so that's balm burlap white pines. And so those three tree species are kind of historically what you tend to find in this sort of close to the lake, sandy soil, dry condition forests and so that's what we're planting and hopefully those will grow up to take this space and turn it into sort of what's now a heavily disturbed zone into a uh, native forest. My name's Olivia Wolf and today we are talking about all of the various planting areas that we manage around Keyslick Park. We have a variety of different types of planting areas ranging from more traditional garden beds to um, fruit and berry patches to a poetry walk, forested, lands, forested areas, and we do a lot of management of invasive species and uh, native plant and habitat management. So that's really what our station is about, is how our team works together to maintain and manage all of these areas in this one property that we have. Hi, my name is Eric Weil. I work for Parks and Recreation on the conservation team as well. And I'm talking with people today about all of the plantings that we're doing uh, in Keyslick Park. We've been working on a big section of woodland area uh, between the sidewalk on North Ave and the entrance to Keyslick Park and then the trail that connects down to the bike path. Um, we've been working on that section of woodland to remove a whole bunch of plant material, uh, invasive garlic mustard and celandine and um, and then recently the city arborist crew worked on taking out the Norway maples that were in that section of land also and we're going to be adding a whole bunch of plants to that and uh, mostly wildflowers to just carpet that area of woodland that will have um, Lots of variety uh, through through that through the season of of blooming, and um, kind of focused on creating a ground cover layer so that we don't have the invasive species coming back in ideally. Um, but then within that ground ground cover layer, having um, lots of taller wildflowers that'll bloom later in the season also. Um, one of the upcoming projects is going to be expanding this community garden that's behind me um, to add more beds to it. There's so many more folks joining the neighborhood with the new development that's come in next to the park and so like offering more space for neighbors to have plots of of the community garden is one of the big projects that'll happen also. Uh, my name's Braden DeForge and I'm the programs coordinator for Burlington Wildways. Uh, Burlington Wildways is a partnership of the 
many of the public facing landowners in the city and so that includes Burlington Parks and Rec, the Intervale Center, um, Rock Point and the Winooski Valley Park District and so a lot of what we do is working on collective conservation efforts um, and so uh, in Burlington, we have a lot of really amazing natural areas. 50% uh, of the city's land area is open space. 25% in total is natural areas. And so we have this awesome Wild Ways Trail, which runs just about 10 miles right through the heart of the city, starting at Salmon Hole Park, <laughs> running through the Intervale, um, all the way to East Island Park, Rock Point, and uh, hopefully expanded in the future. Um, and this is a really great way for folks to get out into the city's natural areas um, experience what we have right here in town um, and for folks who are interested in getting involved we have our volunteer trail stewardship program um, folks can choose a natural area that they have right in the neighborhood or a place they really like visiting um, and really be a great presence on the trail help our land managers um, uh, with upkeep and access um, and we have a lot of other programs too uh, we host an annual city nature celebration in the spring um, which gathers about 600 people annually um, for a variety of field walks and events that happen. Um, we have other programs as well like Grow Wild right here um, where we do uh, native plant and pollinator education um, and so we have a website uh, growwildvt.org um, and it's a great resource for uh, residents in the community who are interested in um, getting more native plants onto the landscape to support our diversity of native bees and you may have a guess as to how many uh, bees we have in the state um, it's up to 350 and so to support all those bees we want to have a variety of native plants um, and so if you're interested our website has information there there's a newsletter as well um, and we come to events like this right here at Keswick Park and you can come learn about these bees yourself.